the Thoughty Auty podcast. What aspects of autism do you think make it hard for us to meet our emotional needs? That's a huge question. <laughs> there are quite a few aspects mm -hmm. of autism that makes it hard to meet our emotional needs. Let's go from the top down. Most sure. of the way that human beings meet their emotional needs is by socializing and by having strong social networks. Mm -hmm. So if for whatever reason you find it hard to do what everyone else around you is doing uh, and have strong social connections, then it's mm -hmm. going to be difficult to meet those needs because it's hard to have a strong social network if you don't do the same things as, as the people around you. Mm -hmm. A great example of this is just if you, if you need something in, in terms of information or maybe I need help moving house or, I don't know, fixing a water system or something or some, something happens and I don't know how to deal with it, if I have a social network, then I'll ask one of my friends or I'll ask my family and they will say, oh, well, when that happened to me, I did this. And then, yeah, yeah. and oh, I'll, I'll put you in touch with the plumber that I used or something. And all of a sudden, yeah. that problem is solved instantly through the passive help of the social network. And I didn't have to know where to go to find the help because I had this sort of supportive network around me. Mm -hmm. So I suppose as well, like if, if you have that sort of social network around you, like a lot of the ways that a lot of, lot, you know, just observing other people, a lot of the ways that they seem to sort of process and get free emotions is by talking to people about them, you know, like having sort of like that outside in kind of view on it. I don't, I don't know a lot of there's there's not a lot of people that I know that can just kind of sit through and just sort their stuff out on their own without, you know, talking to other people. Well, that's how we're designed to sort this stuff out. It's mm -hmm. that's how human beings have coped for a very, very long time is in groups relying on each other. And so it's near on impossible to do that. <laughs> by yourself. Um, now, in terms of what a successful, like autistic social network will look like, it does, it, it's obviously going to look different, but we still need to have some friends, some social network, some way to, mm -hmm. to tap mm -hmm. into those resources. Otherwise it's going to make everything really, really hard. So for, I mean, I've, I hear a lot from people every once in a while, things like making friends is too hard. It's not worth the effort. I've, I'm just going to give up, basically. I'm going to focus my energy on looking after myself because it's too hard to make friends. Mm. And that's a really <laughs> sad story because it doesn't normally end well. It is very, very difficult to get by without that mm. at all. I, I, th I think there's a, there's a really... You know, obviously, obviously, secondary school doesn't tend to be the most pleasant experience for a lot of, or high school um, doesn't seem to be the most pleasant experience for a lot of autistic people. Um, but I found that, you know, that a lot of the systems that we have in place specifically in the UK are, are set up and surrounded, surrounding these uh, younger people, like you know, early, early ages up to, up until like late teens. The, the issues that, that seem to come up quite a lot is that transition from teenagehood to adulthood, you know, cause when you go through sort of a school experience or, or, or around your parents, that those environments that you put in are, are sort of to a certain degree controlled, like, you know, mm. that you're going to be around people during these these certain times but if you go off to university if you move out you're in a, a whole different new place and you, the responsibility for setting up social events and social times and and times to talk to people is on you and like <laughs> you know for, for some people it's it, it can be really really difficult to sort of know 
where to go to find people to be mm. friends with, but also how to go about it. Do you do you do go up to, like for me, for me? I used to go up to people and say, "Hey, do you want to be friends?" Or like, <laughs> you yeah. know, that very direct way of of making friends with people. Obviously, it didn't work. It was cringy, but <laughs> I think that that time, yeah. especially for me, it was 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 a very difficult time. And the stakes are a lot higher too. I mean, if you don't successfully make friends at high school, no one's going to kick you out of home because you didn't make friends mm -hmm. at high school. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do the adequate social things at work and you don't form good relationships and you lose your job and you've got no money, well, maybe if you don't pay your rent for a couple of months, they're going to, you know, there's going to be serious consequences for that. So, sure, sure. So these, these are just a couple of examples of where. It might not be immediately obvious to everyone how emotions and emotional intelligence are absolutely crucial for these types of things, things like making friends, things like keeping a job, mm -hmm. but it's all to do with managing relationships and managing relationships is the most complex thing that we do as human beings. Mm -hmm. So it relies on a few other emotional intelligence skills that not everyone has developed because we weren't taught how to how to develop. Good day, viewers and listeners. Apologies for my very rude interruption to our regularly scheduled broadcast. I just want to remind you that if you have enjoyed the podcast thus far, please make sure to rate, subscribe, like, comment, and share. All of these actions are pretty much the lifeblood of a small independent creator like myself and it will help me get most of my work more of my work to people who really need it if you want to stay up to date with my life get behind the scenes content check out my daily blogs head over to the instagram at thomas henley uk you'll find a link to that down in the description alongside my range of neurodiversity clothing just like this strong powerful autistic hoodie that i love so much and my website, of course, where you can find a contact email to book me for one-to-one -one autism coaching, interviews, workplace training, and speaking. So, thank you very much for listening to this very annoying self-advert, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Whew. Yeah, like I said, the, the, the education system, the socialization, is, is, it's all geared towards people who are not like us. Hmm. You know, and especially if you don't get picked up as autistic i mean you know we could talk about the utility of of certain certain types of uh, autism education but you know a lot of people don't get picked up and they sort of have to go through that that experience and oftentimes learn things the hard way and you know talking to a lot of um autistic women it also seems that that masking can be a really big roadblock because you know people can perhaps mimic learn and mirror different social skills and fit themselves neatly in into a specific social group that they want to be in but they don't really feel that that genuine connection that ability to share things that they love that ability to connect to people on a deeper level and show how they how they really feel inside. That's a really good outside inside example again. Mm -hmm. The mimicking and camouflaging and things like that. You're doing all the things on the outside, but it's not being matched by what those things how the other people are actually feeling. Mm -hmm. So I I remember figuring out much later in life, probably my late 20s, the reason people dance is cuz they actually feel good when they're dancing. <laughs> who knew how was i supposed to know that i just thought people did it because you were i don't i have no i had no idea to be honest <laughs> you just it's put the, it in a situation then you just it's yeah you know, it's, or it's, you it's, had it's to good. or it was something or i don't know <laughs> turns out people actually feel good in their body while they do that sometimes mm -hmm. it's the same thing with like wearing a suit and tie and having like a formal wedding and, and things like why do people do that turns out because a lot of people really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why they that's why they do it. And it turns out that I don't enjoy that. So just naming those things and recognizing that the reason for people's behavior is because it makes them feel good 
mm. means that, well, when I'm looking for behavior that's going to work for me, it, it needs to actually make me feel good as well. It's not just yeah. copying what everyone else is doing. Mm. You're not kind of sort of trying to neatly fit into these social norms of what's what 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 you're going to enjoy. You know, you go out and you go to a go to a party, or you go to like go to a club because that's what people do for fun on the weekend. And everyone tells you that it's fun, and uh, you drink alcohol and you do all of these these crazy things, and that's that's fun. Not 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 for everybody, and and, and <laughs> especially when you're younger, like. People don't really tell you that you don't actually have to do that if you don't want to. <laughs> like, there's such a big culture in the, in the UK. I don't know about about Australia, but we have a really big sort of binge drinking culture in the UK. Australia's um, pretty good at it, at its binge drinking culture. <laughs> okay, so we, you, you, you taught us well. Bit similar. <laughs> yeah, I think I think for me, like if if. I wouldn't really understand if someone said said to me they do this because it feels good because usually the way that I would approach things is does it make sense for me to do this alongside the other things that I'm doing and, mm. and can I actually do this consistently on a regular basis? And then I, th I think another, another really really big thing for me which comes up in a lot of my podcast episodes and the stuff that i do is uh things around alexithymia 